Hello guys, welcome back to another um, lecture video for strength of materials and in this video we will talk about flexural stress in beams. Okay, now what is flexural stress and what would be the effect of flexural stress in the beam? Okay, so when we have a force and couples acting on the beam, that would cause bending stress or flexural stress and shearing stress on, on the cross section of the beam okay aside from that they would also cause deflection which is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the beam and if couples are applied to the ends of the beam and no forces acts on it the bending is said to be pure bending but if forces produce the bending the bending is called ordinary bending so these are two type of bending so again bending moment produced by applied force and applied couple causes bending or flexural stress in the beam now for example we have this beam here that is being um, subjected to bending moment so this one now this is a positive bending since we all know that it is or it has a smiling curvature now in this case of bending we could have flexural stress on the cross-sectional area now if we have this type of bending we have at this point experiences okay this point experiences what we call compressive bending stress since uh, due to internal moment there is a contraction at the top surface of our beam now if we have this type of bending again this is positive bending at the bottom surface it is where our maximum tensile or maximum tensile bending stress occurs since we all know there is an expansion due to the curvature of our um, concrete there is an expansion at this point here now for negative bending we have at the top surface now this surface here experiences tensile okay this is tensile compression stress because at the top we have expansion while at the bottom surface that is we have um, compressive bending stress okay since we have a contraction at the bottom surface so our stress again or bending stress is caused by bending moment okay now then our bending stress varies linearly in our cross-sectional area so what you can see here we have our bending stress this is the magnitude of our bending stress or flexural stress changing linearly all throughout the cross-sectional area of our beam okay now this point this is where our not neutral axis located or this is where we have zero flexural stress okay now if we have positive bending this one so at this point here this is the tensile stresses so from from this point to the bottom if you have positive bending these are tensile flexural stress now from neutral axis to the top surface then we have compressive flexural stress and now our maximum compressive flexural stress occurs at this point this is the maximum um, flexural stress instead at c distance from our neutral axis so it means that the farther the point from the neutral axis the greater the flexural stress okay so therefore the maximum tensile and compressive bending stress is located farthest from the neutral axis and our bending stress is expressed as fb this one that is the bending stress is equal to the moment this is internal moment of that point in the beam over the s that is the section modulus okay and our stress here or bending stress is in unit of mega pascal or it could be in ksi you now for english unit 
Now, we have our so section modulus here, our section modulus that is in terms of the moment of inertia, and moment of inertia is in millimeter to the fourth, and C here, again, we have a known C that is the distance from the neutral axis to the outside surface of the beam, and that has a unit of millimeter, so therefore our section modulus has a unit of millimeter cube. Okay, now our I here depends on the type of material or cross section that we have. Now, if we have rectangular beam, we all know that the moment of inertia of a rectangular beam is equal to BH cube over 12, where our B here, that's the base, H, that is the height, okay, over 12. Now, for circular beam, okay, so we have our I here, that is pi D fourth over 64. In case of uh, we have a non-symmetrical cross-section, like if we have T-beam, so we need to um, get the neutral axis. A neutral axis, by the way, that is the center of gravity of our beam. And then, we need to transform our inertia by using this one. We have I is equal to Ig plus AD squared. Where Ig here, that is the gross moment of inertia, plus A, that is the cross-sectional, or that is the area that you are transforming, and D, that is the center, or that is the distance from the neutral axis to the cross-sectional area that you are um, transforming, or you are transferring to the neutral axis. So let's try to solve problem. So in the problem, we are asked to compute for the maximum flexural compressive stress and maximum flexural tensile stress in the beam and then we use the beam cross-section as 300 millimeter by 200 millimeter so therefore this is a rectangular beam so this one we have 200 millimeter base width and we have 300 millimeter height or thickness okay now this one we have already computed this one in my previous video so if you haven't watched it yet so the link has been posted in the description in this case if you want to determine if you want to compute the maximum flexural stress then we need to adapt the maximum moment or along the beam now in this case we know that the maximum moment in this beam is 100 kilonewton meter so we will be using our moment here is equal to 100 kilonewton meter okay now we have the formula or we have the flexural stress formula that is fb is equal to we have m over s and we know that our s here is equal to i over c correct so we can actually substitute s in the formula we could have um, flexural stress equal to m and our S that is I over C, then therefore we have our flexural stress is equal to M C over I. Again, our M here that is the internal moment, our C that is the distance. If we are dealing here with maximum tensile and maximum compressive stress, so therefore we will be using C. But it depends also on what specific point in the cross section we are. Um, determining or we are computing for the stress and I here that is the moment of inertia since we know that this is rectangular we can directly use the moment of inertia that is bh cube over 12 correct so let's try to since we have already the M now let's compute for the I I is bh cube over 12 and that is we have our B here that is 200 mm and our height that is 300 mm now take that it's being raised to the 3 over that is 12 then we have our inertia that is the moment of inertia that is 450 times 10 raised to the 6th now we have the unit since this is raised to the 3 that is mm cube times mm then we have millimeter to the fourth that is our inertia so let's now substitute 
this value to our flexural stress formula okay now for our c here since we all know that our neutral axis it is in the one half of our height this is the location of our neutral axis since we have rectangular beam if we have rectangular beam and it is symmetrical along the x and the y axis so we can directly point or locate our neutral axis and that is just in one half of our height or that is 300 divided by 2 that is 150 mm from the bottom and top surface now in case of non-symmetrical rectangular beam you need to locate the neutral axis so you need to apply Varignon's theorem okay so that is just the the area total times the centroid let's say that's barred y is equal to the summation of the area the x okay now in this case the distribution of our flexural stress is linear since we have positive moment now in our moment diagram so we are sure that we have positive bending so our beam would behave like this one okay so in this case or in this type of bending we know that at the bottom this is in tensile flexural stress or tensile bending stress and at the top we have compressive bending stress now in case of negative moment then our bending diagram would be frowning curvature okay so therefore since we have positive bending so at the bottom we have tensile stress okay and the neutral axis we have um, zero flexural stress okay then at the top surface then we have here the positive or that is the compressive bending stress so to compute for the maximum compressive bending stress okay so we have to locate the the farthest point no from our neutral axis along the bending stress diagram okay so from the neutral axis this is our compressive stress correct at this point is the maximum compressive bending stress and this location here is 150 meters away from the neutral axis so therefore this is our c so we can now use our flexural stress formula that is um, m c over i that is we have our m the maximum moment again in our diagram is 100 kilonewton meter that is positive 100 um, we have kilonewton meter however we need to convert this into newton millimeter so that we could have a megapascal unit so we multiply 10 raised to the 6 okay since that is the value for our newton millimeter over kilonewton meter okay so that we can cancel out times our c that is um distance farthest from the neutral axis that is a 150 so therefore that is 150 that is in millimeter over our moment of inertia that is we have com already computed this one we have 450 times 10 raised to the 6 millimeter to the fourth that is we have 450 times 10 raised to the 6 we have millimeter to the fourth and we have our flexural stress is equal to 33.3 Three, three. now the unit is since we have um, newton millimeter and multiplied by millimeter here this would give us newton millimeter squared but, but take note we have millimeter to the fourth in the denominator so we can cancel this out and cancel the remaining would be in millimeter squared so the unit is in newton per millimeter squared so we have our flexural stress or the maximum compressive bending stress is 33.333 that is in mega pascal so this is now the maximum compressive bending stress now how about maximum tensile bending stress so we can still apply the formula um, flexural stress equal to m c over i 
Okay? So we have our frictional stress. Now we still have the same moment because that would be the maximum moment. Uh, 100, that is times 10 raised to the 6 times our C. Now, the location of our tensile is on the bottom surface okay and the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom surface is equal to 150 millimeter again since our neutral axis it at the um, center of our rectangular rectangular beam since we have a symmetrical cross section so we have 150 over our i since the same cross sectional area that is that would give us 450 times 10 raised to the 6. So our frictional stress here is 33.333 MPa. So this is in tension. So basically our maximum compressive bending stress and maximum tensile bending stress are equal since we have a symmetrical cross section and the same moment or maximum moment.